Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing well. I wanted to give an update on the case of the 11 month old Camilla, who was brutally uh, murdered by her father. He um, had stabbed her um, and strangled her and then uh, dismembered her. And I've already covered her, um, so if you haven't seen that video, you can go back and watch it and uh, get kind of up to date on where we're at. But ultimately, there is a manhunt for the father. And um, also, the update is that um, on the 26th is when they laid her to rest. So. Um, it says by the police department today, baby Camilla was laid to rest in a private ceremony surrounded by her family and loved ones. On behalf of the family, we share with you the below picture or photo in memory of Camilla. We recognize that a loss such as this has a profound impact on both our officers and our community. And then there is the sweet little girl right there. And then it goes on to say, we will continue to seek justice for Camilla and put forth every effort to apprehend her murderer. We ask the public to keep Camilla's family in your hearts and prayers in the coming days as they continue to navigate an unimaginable loss. Anyone with information concerning the whereabouts of Camilla's murderer, her father, Christopher, is asked to please contact NPD at 203-729-5. 221 or the confidential tip line at 203-720-1010. And I'm going to take you over to a video that was about her being laid to rest. And I'll show you this. And they say killed his 11 month old daughter. Police tweeting out this picture of baby Camilla saying she was laid to rest in a private ceremony today. They put out an update this morning saying detectives are working around the clock alongside the FBI and state police to find 31 year old Christopher Francis Sweeney. Nagatuck police also thanking people who have called in with tips and asking people to continue to keep an eye out and report any information. The FBI is offering a $10,000 dollar reward to anyone with information that leads to the capture and prosecution of Francis Sweeney. So that was um, a video on it. And then there's also one more about um, the little one being laid to rest. So I will play that for you as well. Is now offering a $10,000 reward to anyone who can help them find the man who's accused of brutally murdering his daughter and who that daughter was only 11 months old. NBC Connecticut's Jolie Sherman joins us live in studio now to tell us more about what's going on to track this man down. Yeah, Mike, police are calling this man here, 31 year old Christopher Francis Sweeney, a possible suspect in the death of his baby girl, Camilla. It happened in Naugatuck last week, and the search for him continues. Authorities have an arrest warrant charging Francis Sweeney with the following murder with special circumstances and risk of injury to a minor. Now, last Saturday, police released surveillance images that allegedly show Francis Sweeney walking on Quinnipiac Avenue in New Haven. Then later, police believe they found his car abandoned on I-91 in New Haven. Francis Sweeney is known to law enforcement and has a lengthy criminal history, but it's still unclear what led to this horrific event. This is something that is, it, it tears at the very fabric of our community, losing somebody so young who hasn't even had an opportunity to start their life yet. The girl's name, as mentioned, was Camilla. She was only 11 months old, and police have released this image of her to honor her memory. She was laid to rest yesterday in a private ceremony, and they say, police say, they'll continue to seek justice for her. Mike? So that was um, another video on it, but um, that's so sad. And I, I do truly hope that we all keep the family in our thoughts and prayers because they really need it. It's, it really is unimaginable. I, I could not fathom that. Uh, and then I'm gonna be reading something to you here. So 
This is gonna be, this is his photo, right? A better look at the tattoo on his neck. But this goes on to talk about his criminal history. So um, it's, it's pretty detailed. Uh, it's, wow. So despite a criminal history, um, fraught with violence and income low enough to be eligible for a public defender, I'm going to call him Christopher instead of, um, you know, when they, whatever, the, I don't know what they'd call him if they try to call him by his last name, because I probably can't say it right. Um, but the uh, police department, what is he, Nagatuck? I don't know. Man was free after posting $375,000 bond and was able to live with his 11-month-old daughter, who police say he killed last week. Christopher, 31, remained at, at large Friday, one week after the police say that he strangled, stabbed, and dismembered his daughter, Camilla, in their Millville Ave home where he was on house arrest and monitored by a GPS tracking device. Police said after killing his daughter, Christopher removed the tracker and despite being spotted a few times in New Haven, has managed to evade capture. Connecticut's child advocate, Sarah Egan, said that her office is reviewing aspects of this terrible tragedy and will seek information to fully understand the monitoring and supervision of the alleged perpetrator. The Office of Child Advocate will also investigate how public safety organizations in general determine the risk and conditions related to the risk of an individual who has a violent felony history and who may share a household with a young child, with young children. Quote, this is not to say that folks who are convicted of a violent crime and release will pose a risk to a child, she said but rather to say that conditions of release, probation, or parole should reflect an assessment of risk and need that a, is based not only on the characteristics and profile of the individual released, but also on the stressors and characteristics of the household. Ongoing monitoring of the individual will also need to track the findings and recommendations for the risk and the need um, assessments. Christopher was released from custody December 2020 after spending most of the previous decade behind bars for an assault that put a man in the hospital for several days. Almost a year later, Christopher racked up multiple charges in connection with a carjacking November 4th, 2021, and assaulting correction officers while trying to escape from a detention facility the next day. The court documents show. On the day of the carjacking, Christopher tried to steal four vehicles before he was detained. Court documents stated, and while in custody, Christopher grabbed an officer's pepper spray in lockup, sprayed two police sergeants in the face, fought with a lieutenant, and attempted to break out of, a, of the holding area, the incident report showed. The series of events violated Christopher's parole, and he was sent back to prison to complete his original 10-year sentence for the 2012 assault. Once the sentence was complete, Christopher was released this past June after posting a total of $375,000 bond for his pending cases in connection with the carjacking and escape attempt. He has since been on special parole and officers with the State Department of Corrections said that Christopher had been compliant. Christopher, who is being represented by a public defender in the pending cases, was living with his daughter in a Millville Ave home when she was killed November 18th. According to the State Office of Chief Medical Examiner, the child died from neck compression and stab wounds. Local, state, and federal authorities have since been searching for Christopher and have obtained an arrest warrant for him in his daughter's homicide. His criminal history. So in a news conference on November 18th, the police said that Christopher had an extensive criminal history of violent acts and violent crimes. According to court documents, Christopher first his first conviction stems from a June 18, 2012, when the police department charged him with first degree assault. Previous reports stated that 21 year old Christopher attacked another man at a barber shop, putting him in intensive care unit after an alleged drug deal turned into a robbery. The victim spent several days in the ICU undergoing surgery to his head and face. The police also charged Christopher with possession with intent to sell or dispense in interfering with or resisting an officer June 21st, 2012, according to the court documents. The documents pertaining to these charges were not available when the Hertz Connecticut Media Group requested them this week. He was found guilty of all charges on April 26, 
2013, sentenced to 10 years in custody, followed by 10 years of special parole, the court document showed. Christopher was released to a halfway house November 2020, then to supervised parole one month later. <clears throat> he was then involved in a car crash in New Haven on November 3rd, 2021, and was later found guilty of interfering with an officer. The next day, he was accused of carjacking and three attempts, attempted thefts in West Haven and Derby. While in custody, he tried to escape on the morning of November 5th, his bond totaled $225,000 for these cases, which are still pending in the state superior court in Derby and in Milford. He has not entered a plea in these cases. State police also charged Christopher November 5th, 2021 with third degree assault, second degree breach of peace, failure to comply with fingerprint requirements and assaulting public safety, emergency, medical, public transit or healthcare personnel. The bonds totaled 150000 for these cases, which are still pending the state superior court in Bridgeport. He has not entered a plea in these cases. Incident reports and further information regarding the four state police charges from November 5th, 2021 were also available this, also not available this week. The Hearst Connecticut media has requested the documents, though the state police record division said Wednesday, the reports may take months to become available. November 2021 the charges violated Christopher's parole. He was remanded back to prison to finish the remaining seven months for the assault conviction while in pretrial proceedings for the pending cases. After he completed the 10 year prison sentence, June 20th, 2022, Christopher remained in custody for the pending cases until he posted bond June 27th. The police say they have obtained an arrest warrant charging Christopher with murder with special circumstance and risk of injury to a minor in his daughter's homicide. Once captured, he will be held on a $5 million bond. The FBI is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction. Almost a year after release, there was a car crash. So just before 8 p.m. on June 3rd, 2021, a state trooper was called to the intersection of 95 southbound off-ramp for exit 47 in New Haven for a report of a crash. At the scene, the trooper saw a 2012 Ford Escape stopped in the right shoulder with crushing and disabling damage to the front end. Police found two people on the right shoulder. The driver later identified as Christopher and a passenger. Christopher was laying on his back when his body began to convulse and he was unresponsive to verbal and physical contact. When Christopher's eyes opened, he immediately jumped to his feet, balled his hands into fists, took a fighting stance, and began to yell for first responders to get away from him. Christopher then tried to lunge toward his passenger. Troopers put him in handcuffs. He was taken to Yale New Haven Hospital for minor injuries. May 2022, state police charged Christopher with failure to drive in the proper lane, illegal operation of a motor vehicle without minimum insurance, interfering with or resisting an officer. He pleaded guilty in August to the interfering charge. He received, received a sentence of unconditional discharge, meaning for this case, he was released without imprisonment, probation, supervision, or other conditions. Wow. Wow. Oh, get out of the car or I will kill you. On November 4th, 2021, West Haven police said, Veterans Affairs Hospital employees said he was at home warming up his 2018 Ford Escape when he was approached by a man in hospital scrubs. Police later identified the man as Christopher. When the owner, the vehicle owner asked Christopher if he was also a hospital employee, Christopher nodded yes, and the vehicle owner offered him a ride. The vehicle owner said, when they arrived at the hospital, Christopher got out of the car. While the vehicle owner was on the phone, Christopher came up to the driver's window and said, get out of the car or I will kill you. The incident report stated, the man told police he got out of the vehicle and Christopher got in and drove off towards West Spring Street. <clears throat> Jeez. The vehicle was later found on Beach Lawn Terrace, Terrace in Orange, where a witness described a man matching the description, uh, the suspected car thief walking toward Derby Avenue. Christopher then got into the back seat of an occupied car outside a derby gym. The incident report stated that Christopher told the woman to drive 
She refused, and he later told police he thought that she was an Uber driver. Christopher then went inside the gym, purchased a sweatshirt, and asked for a day pass. Employees told police that after Christopher left, they saw him try to open the driver's side door of a van parked out front. While police searched the area, a woman told an officer the suspect had tried to get into her car while she was in Wendy's drive through Police later apprehended Christopher at a farm in Derby. The West Haven Police Department charged Christopher that day with robbery involving an occupied motor vehicle, first degree larceny, interfering with a police officer. He has not entered a plea to those charges. That case remains pending in State Superior Court in Milford. And records indicate that Christopher was freed on a $100,000 bond in that arrest. Christopher was charged in March with the remaining attempt to car thieves from Derby. The Derby Police Department charged him with third degree burglary, attempt to commit first degree larceny, three counts of attempt to commit third, third degree larceny, attempt to commit third degree burglary, and two counts of second degree breach of peace. He has not entered a plea to those charges, and that case is pending in State Superior Court in Derby. He was released on, uh, from custody on a $25,000 bond for those charges. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> It continues, but like, what is going on? This is ridiculous. This is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. This man should not have been out. Enough. Like, no. No more collecting funds because you're letting people out. That's enough. It makes me sick. Keep them locked up. That's it. He got enough chances. He cannot be in society. He can't, obviously. Now look at this beautiful little 11-month-old girl has lost her life and it's affected the mother of that child and the entire family for the rest of their lives. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, the attempted escape. Shortly before 1 a.m. on November 5th, the morning after Christopher's arrest of the carjacking case, an officer at West Haven Police Department Detention center noticed water leaking from a, a clogged toilet in the man's cell in the incident report. Um, a few officers went to help with Christopher, who then attempted to tie a piece of cloth around his neck. The investigating officer wrote in his report, or her report, Paz then, which is the officer, pointed her pepper spray at him and ordered him away from the cell door. The officer wrote that Christopher did not care, continued to lean against the door. She returned the spray to her holster, believing it would it to be secure. Paz and two police sergeants then opened the door, began moving Christopher to a different cell. As he was walking, Paz stated that Christopher turned and pushed her to grab her pepper spray, which she then sprayed at her and two sergeants. As Paz requested assistance, Christopher began to physically fight with a police lieutenant. He then attempted to run out the detention center as police opened the door to let him in an addition let in an additional officer. He ran directly into that officer. Multiple officers apprehended him. Christopher was charged with two counts of second degree assault, third degree, uh, uh, three counts of assault on a public safety officer, attempted criminal escape from custody, refusal to fingerprint, and third degree robbery. Court records show the charges from the incident, the police lockup, and pending are pending in the state superior court in Milford. Christopher has not entered a plea on those charges, and he was released on a hundred thousand dollar bond in that case. That's ridiculous. It this is disgusting. I'm I'm sick. I'm sick over it. It's it's sick. Unbelievable. I I can't even believe it. I just can't even believe it. That, that's absolutely infuriating, right? I don't care if he was currently right now on his supervised special parole, whatever, had done a check-in four days before he killed this little girl and he was compliant. I don't care. I don't care. He shouldn't have even had that opportunity. He should never have been out. My opinion, my opinion only. I'm very angry about this. Actually, I'm quite... Man, it's freaking disappointing. Um, here's another video here. Um, all right. Circumstances of this case are both horrific and heartbreaking. Tonight, the Naugatuck community grieving after police say a father brutally murdered 
his 11 month old daughter. This is something that is, it, it tears at the very fabric of our community, losing somebody so young who hasn't even had an opportunity to start their life yet. Police providing new gruesome details about the death of Camilla Francis Sweeney, which include that she had been found choked, stabbed, and dismembered on Friday. Veteran officers calling it one of the most difficult cases they've seen and are not yet sure of a motive. I think that's a question uh, that we're all struggling with at this point of, of what would lead somebody to do this, much less to their own child. For days, a manhunt has been underway for Christopher Francis Sweeney. The 31-year-old is wanted on charges including murder with special circumstances. He was last traced with surveillance pictures to Quinnipiac Avenue in New Haven on Friday, and a car linked to him was found abandoned on I-91 in that city. Join the search are state and federal authorities. The FBI is prepared to offer a reward of up to $10,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the subject in this case. On Friday, police say Francis Sweeney and the baby's mother had been involved in some type of argument. They say he's already cut off his tracking device and destroyed his cell phone amid an effort to avoid detection. This is something that um, we will not rest until Francis Queenie is brought to justice. Um, yeah, he needs to be brought to justice and no more uh, letting him out. Enough. Enough. Um, this goes on to say that um, they're working around the clock to apprehend him and that, you know, what he's wanted for. But as of Saturday, he still remained at large, that there was a private funeral attended by family and loved ones held for Camilla Saturday. And the police um, said earlier Saturday they have received tips in the case and thank the public for aiding us in our effort to bring this violent criminal to justice. We continue to ask the public to help be our eyes and ears. If you have any information regarding the suspect, please contact the police department immediately. And then the $10,000 reward is being offered by the FBI. And the police did not say how many tips they had received or whether they believed that he was even still in Connecticut. And uh, that they had said that he originally had fled to New Haven and there, they, you know, said there was a man matching his description, had been seen fleeing after abandoning his car on Interstate 91 on uh, last Friday. Police have also released security images of him. And, um, and that was supposed to be supposedly hours after he killed Camilla. And then it talks about him being on special parole and being monitored, right? I mean, come on. Who, who even cares at this point? Uh, then he was convicted, right? Talks about some of his convictions, not nearly as detailed as we just went into and the charge, um, the money that he, he spent to get out. And prior to the homicide, they claim he was compliant with the terms and that the case has prompted the State Office of Child Advocate to investigate policies regarding the release of violent offenders and a household with children, which we have discussed um, earlier. And yeah, I think it definitely needs to be reviewed because, listen, if they're going to keep doing this where they keep letting these offenders out, then somebody needs to be an advocate, step up and say, you want to let them out? That's stupid, but you don't let them around children. You don't bring them into the home of the children. Gosh, what are you thinking? It's only a matter of time. Just because all of his violence had never been toward a child doesn't matter. It's only a matter of time before somebody that is a criminal, this type of repetitive again and again and again, he can't get it right, right? He's just a felon through and through and through before they take it to where it actually, where it went. I mean, uh, it's just awful. Our top story tonight, as the search for an accused infant killer continues, we have learned new details about the suspect's criminal history and the agencies that were supposedly watching him. News 12 Connecticut's Marissa Alter has been digging through his court records. Marissa, they bring up a lot of questions. Eric, they do. Chiefly, did the system fail this child? Police previously said Christopher Francis Sweeney was out on parole 
Facebook at the time. But we've learned he was also on house arrest as part of his bond conditions. That means someone should have known the minute he left the house Friday. Christopher Francis Sweeney is now at the center of an intense manhunt by local, state, and federal law enforcement, accused of the unimaginable, stabbing, strangling, and dismembering his infant daughter inside their home in Naugatuck Friday morning. But on November 14th, Francis Sweeney was in Milford Superior Court on two pending cases, where records show probation officials reported his full compliance with the terms of his bond release. Those included house arrest and GPS monitoring. That led the judge to sign off on Francis Sweeney's request to leave the house on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Just four days later, Francis Sweeney allegedly killed 11-month-old Camilla Francis Sweeney, turning their home on Millville Avenue into a crime scene. Police believe he then left the house and went to Waterbury, where he got into an argument with the child's mother, cut off his ankle monitor, and took off. They said Camilla's mother didn't know her daughter was dead at the time of the fight. She then returned home, and 911 was called reporting the baby's death. Court records show Francis Sweeney was previously convicted of a 2012 assault. He served several years in prison, then was released on supervised parole. But in November 2021, Francis Sweeney was arrested again after a carjacking at the VA hospital in West Haven. Police reports allege he also assaulted multiple officers while in custody. Francis Sweeney remained locked up until June when he was released on bond with those strict conditions. I reached out to the Office of Probation to find out what time they got the alert he'd violated house arrest and if they contacted police. Theoretically, someone should have been searching for Francis Sweeney as soon as that happened. The executive director told me he can't discuss pending cases. He also said it was possible Francis Sweeney had previously been cleared by the office to leave for a medical appointment or for work. Yeah, right. He remains on the run tonight with a $10,000 reward for his capture. Marissa Alter, News 12, Connecticut. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm sorry, but yeah, right. Like, stop with the excuses already. Enough. Oh, it's possible that it was blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Nope. Y'all made a mistake. You made a mistake. A big one. You better make it right. Right? You've got the public that's out and looking. And that's what I am ultimately advising of you is if you see this man anywhere oh please contact the police immediately please this man is so dangerous it, it's only a matter of time before he is going to do something again especially being on the run and trying to avoid police he's going to be frantic right just like when he jumped up and and tried to fight um the the medics that were trying to help him he is a violent person who when he feels like he's backed into a corner gets violent and um he's dangerous he's so dangerous we need him off the streets so i um yes if you happen to see him um please call the police and i have a community post up that has the picture of the 11 month old camilla as well as christopher and so if you want to share that out you could share that and we can um, try to get this circulated more uh but I'm sad. I'm so sad. Please, please keep the family of Camilla in your thoughts and prayers. I will continue to update you on this case. I'm hoping that the next update will be that they have got him, that he has been captured um, is what I'm hoping for, right? So I'll let you know, but I hope that you all are having a good day and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Thank you for listening, everyone. Love you. Bye.